Well, have I told you already how much I love Tasmania? Here we are at the amazing location of Lake McIntosh, which is not far from the little town of Tulla. And uh, I just drove through Tulla and got a coffee down there. And it's like you're driving through a rainforest surrounded by mountains on each side with low hanging clouds in the distance. And I've seen Lake McIntosh uh, before and I knew this big mountain over here um, was just right down near the dam wall, which is over there. So I thought, well, I'm coming there and I'm gonna see if I can shoot some Milky Ways at this location. So my intention today is to scout this location and have a look around and see where there might be some great places to shoot the night sky. Immediately, as soon as I pulled the car up here, at this very spot, there's a perfect location right here. So I'll show you about that one now. So as you know, I love to find foreground objects of interest, point of interest to put into my nightscapes. One of the things I love are, are rocks, and there's a couple of really big ones here. There's a few more further around the corner there, and maybe some old logs, tree logs. Any of those would be fantastic to put as a foreground uh, point of interest. Of course, the water behind, then the gorgeous hill over there, and the Milky Way core right on the left-hand side of this mountain right across the road there. So that's gonna make it, I think, a great composition, really easy to get to, easy to find. Now, all I need is for the sky to clear tonight. Now, this place is so beautiful. I'm gonna get the drone up in the sky, get some aerial footage to use for my video. Now, um, trouble is, what's happened? I've got it out of the packet, no worries. Uh, the controller, all fully charged. The phone that I used to control the drone, completely flat battery. How did that happen? Because I thought everything was charged before I left home. Turn it on and it just won't turn on. So now I've got it charging in the car. That's gonna take a little while, which is really frustrating because the sky is beautiful, the sun is on the mountain, the clouds are hovering. So things don't always go to plan. I'm just gonna have to have a look around and spend some time just enjoying the rest of the scenery before I can put this baby up in the sky. Now, I've just been wandering through the bush. You know, it's amazing what you find when you have a bit of a look around a location. This is a very popular place for campers to come and probably do their fishing and uh, spend the night. And um, on this tree, have a look at this. Someone's left their boots behind and there's a dog. No idea what that's all about. But anyway, someone knows what that story is. I'm sure there's a story there somewhere. So as you know, my philosophy for doing this particular road trip to Tasmania is to try and find some locations I don't normally shoot at. Now, obviously I'm from central Victoria in Australia, which is a completely different landscape to what I'm finding here. So we don't have these gorgeous mountains in the background like that and the uh, rainforest just at hand as well. So it's a beautiful place to shoot. Now, one of the traps though, is that the weather conditions can change just like that. And I found last night when I was over at Cradle Mountain, it was so windy and so um, blustery and there was sleet that I had no option but to just get back under shelter. So I'm hoping it's a bit better location here. It certainly is warmer here. I, when I left Cradle Mountain this morning, it was, it was about zero degrees. Um, and right here, well, I've got the jacket on, but it's not overly cold. So I'm hoping the clouds clear later on tonight and we get some great shots. So this area here is just behind where I've parked the car. So the lake is down there, the mountains over the other side, and what's here? Ferns. And it's a beautiful rainforest area. It's something that I've noticed on my drive here that on the sides of the road, the forests just go up on both sides and it's so wet. Uh, and I suppose it makes these things grow prolifically. Um, but yeah, it's just a beautiful place to be. And I'm just gonna enjoy having a bit of a look through here whilst I'm waiting for that battery to charge. fantastic little walk this is. It's just covered in all these little 
uh, mosses and ferns, gorgeous old trees. Problem is, just down there, there's rubbish everywhere. One of the hallmarks of Tasmania is the conservation efforts that people go to to keep this place pristine and clean and original for everyone to enjoy. So you come to a place like this, there's obviously been campers here, it's just dump their rubbish down there. It looks disgusting. Wow, so as you can see, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous location. Just love it here, and this is just the rainforest part of it. What I really came here for was the mountain, which I'm going to have a look at now and see if I can get that drone up into there. Well, finally, I got that battery charged for my phone. I could operate the drone. And I got the Mavic 2 Pro up in the air, got some awesome footage, fantastic. This is a great drone, the Mavic 2 Pro. It's never let me down, it's always been very reliable, and it's just so easy to fly. I did have a Mavic 1 before this one, which was pretty good, although on one occasion um, I lost contact with the signal, just vanished and I thought the drone is gone. I had no idea what was going on. Battery was getting low, it was starting to beep. So after searching for quite a while, I dejectedly walked back to the car and what did I find? Sitting right behind the car, the drone had landed itself back home and where it had taken off from. But I had no idea. I'd just spent the last half an hour looking for it in the paddock. So these things are pretty smart and uh, well worth the effort when you get them up there. Man, it sure is a different story here to what it was back at Cradle Mountain. There's nobody here. I've got this whole lake pretty much to myself. So back at Cradle, I mean, as iconic and beautiful as it is, it's inundated with tourists all day long, especially at sunrise and sunset. Having said that, I had the place pretty much to myself during the night, but of course that wasn't very conducive to photography or anything else with a howling gale of a wind, no stars to be seen, and sleet and rain. Never mind, I'll get over it eventually. So this place on the other hand, I'm really looking forward to coming back here later on. And what I've done is I've marked my GPS in the car with this location because Right now, I'm gonna jump in the car and go and explore some other places. So whether I come back here during the daytime or, or in the evening, it doesn't matter because I can find this exact location. And that's my advice to you guys. Mark your locations, scout them out during the daylight hours, and you'll have no trouble later on when you come back in the dark. Wow, isn't this just an amazing, stunning landscape? And you know, of course, that's what attracted me to Tasmania in the first place. I wanted to come here because it's different to where I'm from. And if any of you have watched my videos in the past, you know that where I come from in central Victoria, there's no mountains, there's no rainforests, and there's hardly any auroras like they get down here, the southern lights. But you know where I come from, there's old uh, farm machinery, there's old buildings, there's silos, there's gates and fences, and all sorts of things that are unique to my landscape. And so what do I do? I get out and shoot them. I light them up, create a nightscape, and create something, I hope, of great beauty. So my encouragement to you guys is to do the same thing. Look for whatever it is that's in your landscape that makes your landscape unique and something special. And you know, people all around the world will see that and say, man, I wish I had that in my backyard. You know, we tend to uh, judge our own situations and think no one else is has anything as bad as what we have or as good as where they are it's not like that at all you know make the most of the location you're in
Okay, well here we are the next morning at Lake McIntosh. Now I had an absolutely frustrating night once again. That's three nights in a row where I've been pretty much totally clouded out. I did get a few breaks in the cloud um, and I managed to snap off a few shots, but I couldn't see anything of the Milky Way core because by the time that rose over there in the east, it was totally 100% blanketed out. Having said that, I set up a time lapse anyway, um, so it'll be interesting to see just how much I can capture through those little gaps in the clouds. So Lake McIntosh, well, it's a beautiful place. Uh, anyone who happens to be traveling in this district, I highly recommend you come here and have a look at this. Uh, it's an oasis out here, very quiet. There was no one else anywhere near here last night. Um, and just looking now at those low lying clouds across the mountains in the district, it's really amazing, it's beautiful. And so that's Lake McIntosh comes to a close. That's all I've got for you from this location. Uh, as frustrating as it was, I loved being here and I was able to breathe in that beautiful Tasmanian fresh air. So until I see you on our next adventure, which is today, um, I will see you later and thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to comment down below, I'd be happy to discuss any of these things with you and uh, you have a great day, I'll see you later.